All right, howdy, Ben from VPF. Uh, we've created a new product. It is a fuel return kit for the 370Z platform. And uh, today I'm gonna to show you some tips on how to install this correctly and orient everything and make sure it just, it just goes very, very smooth and hopefully answers as many questions that you may or may not have. So this is one part that is already pre-assembled. And the reason we pre-assemble this is so you don't mix and match this line with that one or that one with this one. This is the way it is. And these are all tight and ready to go. So this is one of the main big pieces. There's a few small pieces. This is the flex fuel harness, some fuel hoses, some clamps and bolts, and then the main fuel line. And then this fitting is left intentionally uh, uninstalled. And the reason is it is way easier, oh God, to push this up to where the, uh, the fuel top hat is without a fitting on it. So you'll get this up in there and then you'll reinstall a fitting and we'll show you what it looks like inside the car. This car already has one installed on it and we're gonna show you exactly what it looks like. So first part, the main fuel line, uh, running the fuel line from the front to the back of the car is something that uh, I think most people can figure out no problem. But the important part is this, you wanna make sure that the 90 degree fitting is facing this direction on the adapter. And the reason is, this is long enough on purpose to go to the front of the car first, and then it will go down and then start going to the back of the car and lay on top of the subframe right next to the power steering lines, at which point you'll just feed it underneath the car right next to the OEM feed line and zip tie it. All right, one of the things I forgot to mention about this kit is that it actually has a flex fuel built into it. So a lot of the kits on the market don't have this. This one comes with it fully integrated and ready to go. It is uh, from Fuelit. This is a nice brand. It automatically converts the frequency out of the sensor into a five volt signal so that the, you know, your tuner, if it's me, it's easy to adjust on the ECU. And you also get this cool gauge as a physical reference for if you're looking at fuel pressure, trying to tune that on the dyno. Anyways, so now we're gonna show you how this goes on the car. All right, next up, lube up the O-ring with a little bit of oil. We don't wanna tear it. It's gonna go mounted right here into the OEM hard line. Once this is bolted down, you're gonna get this into position over here. This mounting plate on the back, put that flat up against the sheet metal and mark the holes, like the circles with a Sharpie. And then you also wanna get this regulator. The top of that can be flush with the sheet metal here. You are gonna to have to drill two holes. This is exactly what I use to drill those two holes. Just a drill, a 90 degree adapter and a uh, unibit. Naturally, you're gonna to wanna to remove the strut brace and the upper intake manifold to make enough space to get in there with this tool and make those holes. Once those two holes are drilled and you're ready to put this in for the final time, bolt everything down, leave this loose, put this on the OEM fuel line first, click that on, and then put this up and bolt it down with the supplied nuts and hardware. And then lastly, the supplied vacuum line, this will go on the back of the throttle body, this will go on the other hard line on the back of the intake manifold, this one will go directly onto here, and then put a zip tie on it to secure it, just like how these ones are. All right, so you're gonna come underneath the car now, after you've ran that fuel line from the front all the way back here, you're gonna zip tie it, of course, to these hard lines that are, you know, available. And uh, this gentleman actually did it this way, and they went around the back, and that's how they got it up to the top. So I actually like this, this works really well. So you can route this line just like that. You're gonna to wanna to remove the OEM fuel sending unit so we can modify it for the bulkhead. It's not very hard. You're gonna to wanna to drill a three quarter inch hole so you can put the 90 degree bulkhead in it. And the way we like to do it, where we think it fits the best, is put that hole about right in the center, face this in the same direction as the OEM fuel barb, and then this is how the 180 is gonna go after you feed the hose up through there and then you install the end of this fitting. Tip I'm gonna tell you now, Please, please, please. Once you put the hose all the way in here and you start threading it together, make sure that they bottom out. Very important. You don't want these to leak. Now, inside, you are gonna wanna go straight from the center where the fuel pump is into this one. Use one of these hoses that are supplied and then clamp them down with some of those. Use a flathead screwdriver. And then you're gonna wanna put this one on the other barb, clamp it down again, and then you're gonna wanna run this into the OEM center piece to keep the, uh, the swirl jet and the Venturi working. And that's how you do that. Then reinstall this. Okay, so once you reinstall your top hat, in the case of this exact car, we did use a Z1 top hat, but the OEM line is gonna connect just like normal, and then that becomes a return. And then that 180 and the hose that we supply, that's gonna come up 
roughly about around here, curl around the back, and then it's gonna come into this line here. It looks a little weird because of the configuration, but it'll look a little more simple on an OEM setup. All right, so this is how you wire in a flex fuel sensor for your 350Z or G37 or even Q50. So once you have your harness, uh, the kits vary, but a lot of the process does stay the same. So the part where the wires come out of the sheath, I like to fold these over like this, and then you're gonna wanna make a small hole in this rubber boot over here where the wiring harness goes through, and you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna push these wires through so that way they're dangling on the inside. And now the connector side, which in this case is right here, uh, we're using our brand of flex fuel kit on our fuel return system, so the sensor for us is right here. So we're gonna show you how we connect it. So you're gonna have to get this connector over into the area, so I'm actually gonna push it in between this bar here. And then this is gonna be very kind of challenging to see, but this one right here, you're gonna pull this rubber boot up and split it, and then you're gonna to try to get these wires in between it and then push it back down so it looks clean. And then all you're gonna to wanna to do is just connect these in a clean fashion and just tuck them away. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to remove this kick panel here. And then once you find this wire after you push it through, uh, I got the other harness here, so red, black, white. So the red wire, you're gonna tap into this pin here that's 12 volts when you key on. Uh, then there's a ground under here. That's where the black wire is gonna go. And then the white wire. So you're gonna undo the first connector. Uh, looks like they twisted it together, but it works. So it's gonna be starting in the bottom left corner. You're gonna go in one wire and to the right by one wire. So it's pin 102. And once you have that set up, it's very easy to set up on the tuning side. Just let your tuner know that it's set up on pin 102. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful for installing this kit. Uh, if you watched the video and you haven't bought one, but you're interested in one, the, the link is going to be in the description. So click on that link so you can check it out. And uh, just thanks everyone for your support watching the videos. Um, you can follow on Instagram, BPF Tuning. That's it.